So let me tell you a story. We got two guys here. We got Bob and we got Adam. And so Bob is a really good guy. And Bob really wants a girlfriend. He really wants to fall in love. Uh, he also wants to have really good friendships. He wants to be successful. So when Bob goes out with people, he's, he figures, you know what? If I make everybody happy, I'm going to have an amazing life. And this makes sense, right? So he goes out on a date with a beautiful woman, for example. And Bob's attitude or energy is like, you know, let me take her where she wants to go to dinner. So the first thing he asks her, where do you want to go to dinner? You know, I just want you to be happy. And when Bob takes her out, he makes sure that all her needs are met. It really comes from a caring place. If she sees she's looking around and she's uncomfortable, he's like, oh, do, did you need something else? And then when she tells stories, he makes sure to laugh at all her jokes. Oh, ha, ha, no, that's funny. Oh, that's really interesting. Tell me more. And he's make sure to be curious and attentive. And everything they tell you to be when you're young and learning to date women. Now, Adam, on the other hand, he has a different attitude. He has a different energy. Whereas he cares about people, he's not concerned with making everybody happy. So when Adam goes out on a date, he's, he's more like, where do I want to go to dinner? You know what? I really like this Chinese food restaurant. It's really good. I love sitting in there. I love the atmosphere. I know the, uh, the waiters. I even know the chef. It's a great place. You know what? We're going to go there tonight. And if you want to come along, you're welcome. When Adam's on a date, he'll ask questions. He's curious, but if he disagrees, he disagrees. You know what? I think you're bullshitting me right now. But come on, tell me, you really believe that? See, Adam is more concerned with being honest and authentic and real, being true to himself than Bob is. And in a weird sort of way, Adam is more confident. He's more real because when you're overly concerned about what people think of you, you get them to realize that you have no sense of self because when people go out with you, they're going out with you because they want to get to know you. And if I'm putting all my energy on you and not any energy on myself, not putting out my real passions, real desires, then in essence, they're not really hanging out with you, are they? You're just pretending to be who they want you to be to make them happy. Whereas Adam says, this is who I am. Either take it or leave it. And if you don't like it, that's great. You can go find somebody you do like, and so can I. And in that process, that process of being real, sometimes even rude, even sometimes stepping up tension, even sometimes being disagreeable, Adam actually is more honest, more authentic, more real, and more attractive. So in this video, I want to talk about what creates unshakable confidence. What creates real confidence in a man? I want to talk about the three qualities that you can exude that give you this internal energy of beingness before you even move, of being a solid, confident, grounded man, a powerful man, and the three qualities that you can develop or that will come out of you naturally when you have these other three qualities. So we're going to cover six qualities that really make you come across powerfully confident, sexy, and attractive to the opposite sex. But before I do, if you're getting any value out of this video or my past videos, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share. I appreciate that. It really helps us to grow the channel so we can bring you better content you really like. So let's dive right in. What is the first quality to unshakable confidence that makes you solid like a man, that makes you powerful? like a man. And that first quality is tension. It's becoming a master of tension. It's being able to step into tension, to create tension, to bring tension, to play with tension. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, life by nature has tension in it. In the masculine domain, the male domain is tension. We love tension. Think about it. If you go back to our primitive ancestors, let's go back to a primitive tribe. What did the men do primarily to provide value for the tribe well they were good with tension and the higher they were on the totem pole in that tribe or the hierarchy in that tribe the more power they got the more they earned respect the more attractive they were because they were masters of their masculine domain so you got this tribe and you got let's say you got three different warriors in the tribe okay three different hunters let's say 
one of the hunters is kind of scared of tension. So when they go out to hunt, they go out into the wild where the wild animals are, where there could be other tribes maybe that don't think like you, where you could get hurt and get lost, where something bad could happen. This member of the tribe, well, he's, you know, I don't know. I, I, let's be careful. Let's play it safe. Uh, let's take our time. Uh, I don't want to go out this time. You know, there's, there's a reactive, nervous pulling back of energy. Okay, then we got another tribe member and he is all balls to the wall. He's not afraid to get out there. He's not afraid to go for it. He's not afraid to push boundaries. He sees that, let's say it's a wild boar and he's got a spear and he runs right at that wild boar and he's ready to take that thing out. And he doesn't even think, he just goes, okay? And then we got a third member of the tribe. And this third member has no qualms about, you know, going up and doing what needs to be done. Let's say he needs to spear that wild boar. But he thinks first, he pick, he observes first, and he makes sure that he does it the wisest way possible. He calibrates all that tension. And he says, okay, what's too much tension? What's too little tension? This is the sweet spot. This is the smart way to do it. He's good and comfortable with tension, but he thinks before he acts. He feels before he acts. And if you look at these three people, when they come back to the tribe, I want to ask you, who would be the most attractive to the women in the tribe? Who would be the most powerful? Who would rank the highest in the hierarchy of the tribe? Well, I think you already know the answer. It's that third one, right? Because the first guy, he's, he's useless. He's not going to be able to feed anybody. He's going to come back with so little food or maybe no food. And this is going to be really unattractive. It's a guy who can't provide, a guy who can't step into tension, a guy who can't make something happen. The second guy, he's more valuable because he's going to go out there and get stuff done. He's going to make stuff happen. Yeah, he's going to come back with a good kill and food for the tribe. And that's really valuable. But the problem with him is he may rush in before thinking and get himself killed one of these days. And then you got the third member of the tribe. He's the one that's going to be good with tension. He's going to step into tension. He's going to get stuff done. But he's not going to rush in. He's going to do it taking in all the data first and make the best decision based on his gut instincts of how to do what needs to be done so that everybody stays safe. That is your true leader. That's your master of tension. That is the masculine domain. If you've ever seen the movie Black Hawk Down, such a great film, you'll see the Green Rangers. I call them the Green Rangers because they were green. They were brand new, right? And they were nervous and they were reactive. And in this movie, it's a true story about when they were in Somalia and I think it was about 200 men went out to do an operation and they got surrounded by two or 3,000, you guys probably know, you can put in the comments, of basically people from Somalia that wanted to kill them. It, the operation went bad, everything went terrible. It's a great film. If you haven't seen it, watch the film. Well, there were rangers in there that were green. They were brand new. And there were Delta Force. And if you guys know the Delta Force, they're special elite uh, military. And you could really see this difference between the two. You had rangers that were gung-ho fighting and getting that shot reactive because they were pushing too hard. You had rangers that were holding back, scared, hiding, and almost getting themselves killed and, and getting themselves killed, actually. And it was bad news. But you also had these Delta Force guys. And every one of these Delta Force guys were calm under pressure. They, even in the face of death, they were careful. They were calculating. They were taking out the enemy one after another. As a man, my, my, my man, I could feel my testosterone rising while watching these guys. And some of them died. Some of them didn't. At the end of the film, there's this character. I think it's played by uh, Eric Ban Banna. I'm not sure. You guys can comment on that too. He gets a bunch of the rangers out. They were barely surviving. He, he brings them back uh, out of the combat zone. And then he grabs a little bit of food, takes a big drink of, I think, some coffee. And then he just walks right back into the, uh, the combat zone again. And somebody asks him, what are you doing? And he's like, well, there's, there's more uh, rangers out there to save. Is basically what he said. And I'm paraphrasing all of this. You guys can comment. You can look it up because it's been years since I've seen it. But it was really powerful to watch him do that because he did it completely calm under pressure. And that sense of, comfort under tension is what made that character so powerful and all the characters that played Delta Force. And it really made me think about the power of being calm under pressure, how they could see so much more going on. And that's what kept them from getting killed. 
and all the reactive guys were being taken out one after another. This is the power of being good with tension. This is the power of being calm and confident and comfortable under tension. And women can sense this on a man. When a man can handle a lot of tension, when she can look at him, she can challenge him, she can test him, and you guys all know about testing, and she can give him uh, flack, she give him shit, and he just stays calm and handles it well, that's really, really damn sexy for a woman. When he can stay low in his body, you know, relaxed with an open heart, it's even better. You know, we're gonna come to that next. And that's part of what makes him so damn powerful, so damn sexy, because it harkens back to this primitive time when people had to survive, when the tribe had to survive, when he could go out there and hunt and kill and come back alive with food for the baby so they're gonna all survive, okay? And this is huge when you think about it. Now, the next quality that a man needs to have is ability with vulnerability. His ability to be comfortable with vulnerability, his ability to deliver vulnerability. And a lot of guys freak out over this one. This one, when mixed, when encapsulated with solid tension skills, is, makes you probably one of the sexiest men alive. And a lot of guys think, oh, vulnerability is neediness. Don't be needy. Women won't be attracted to neediness. And you're completely wrong. I'm just going to be honest. It's bullshit. Vulnerability has nothing to do with neediness, okay? Neediness is neediness. It's when you're vulnerable and then begging people to validate you. It's when you're vulnerable and you open your heart and you're saying, please don't leave me. I need you. That's neediness, right? Not sexy at all. But when a man is primarily great with tension, solid with tension, he can handle a lot of tension. Even a little bit goes a long way in today's culture because so many men aren't masculine today. Then his ability to be vulnerable comes across as courageous. You know, this is what I'm feeling. I'm going to give you a story. I'm going to give you an example on this one. When I first learned about vulnerability, when vulnerability was like new to me and I was terrified of it and I would swear, I've been vulnerable a million times. Women don't like vulnerability. They don't want anything to do with vulnerability. I had this girl in my life and I and I was talking to this guy and I said, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do to get her back. I lost her. She meant a lot to me. This was all new to me. And he told me to be vulnerable, be real with her. And I'm like, that's not going to work. You're, you're full of it. And he's like, no, man, this is how I want you to do it. You've been doing it all wrong. He said, I want you to go up. I want you to say exactly what you feel, but I don't want you to ask for anything in return. I don't want you to ask her to take care of you, to fix you. To, I don't want you to beg. I don't want you to plead. I just want you to own what you're feeling from your heart like a man. And if she doesn't respond, she doesn't deserve you. And I want you to act that way and walk away. It may hurt because you got real raw and vulnerable with her, but you can handle it. That's what you got to tell yourself. I can handle it. I can, I can walk right through it. There may be some tears as long as they're not reactive tears. That's fine. So I walked to this woman and she was working in a pub and she just got off work. She was in the band and I said, Hey, I need to talk to you. And she was nervous and reactive because we had a really bad breakup. And she was trying to get away a little bit. She kind of walked into the car. Yeah, yeah, what do you want? And I walked with her. I remember standing next to her like, no, I really want to talk to you. She's like, yeah, yeah, I got to go. And she, she puts her instrument in the trunk and she gets in the car. And I said, no, I really need to tell you something. And I remember she'd started the car and then she turned the car off. She turned, looked right at me, right in the eyes and said, okay, what? And I was like, oh, now it's on. She finally heard me. There's something I want to say at a deeper level. And I remember looking at her and I said, I'm about to move away soon. I don't know if I'll ever see you again, but I don't want to leave without telling you something first. And that's that I like you a lot. I care about you a lot. I want to work this out. And I ultimately want to be with you again. But if you don't feel the same way, that's perfectly fine. I can handle it. I'm a man, but I'm not leaving without at least saying this to you once first, without letting you know what I feel, because you mean a lot to me. And I just relaxed into it. See, now I'm using my tension skills to relax into speaking with a courageous heart. That's what vulnerability is, speaking from an open heart and not asking for anything in return. And I just shut up and sat in the silence, relaxed into the tension of that vulnerability. And you know what she did? She immediately got up, grabbed my hand. We walked over to this curb. We sat down and spent the next 45 minutes 
connecting, bonding, and talking about what happened. It was the one of the most beautiful, amazing things. I was actually shocked. I did not expect this to work. I expected it to be over in seconds, and it was amazing how much more connected in that moment we became because of that. So as you get really good retention, which is the masculine domain, and you learn to encapsulate your vulnerability with your tension and ground your, your, your vulnerability with your tension skills, you become ultimately uber attractive. You can keep your heart open to women now and they can feel you do it. And that's what makes you so interesting, so real, so attractive to women. So it starts with the tension, then it goes to the vulnerability. The next thing that you've really got to master, and I'm gonna help to illustrate this a little bit, and it comes back to that first thing, that unshakable confidence, to be able to develop tension and vulnerability skills, which makes you seem super confident and super uh, powerful under pressure, is non-reactiveness. Non-reactiveness to outcome, not non-reactiveness to life. You want an emotional expression, you want life, you want to care, you want to really invest in people. But if I was reactive to her, if I was reactive to this beautiful woman sitting on the curb, and I really needed her to like me to feel good about myself, then I would not have come across as solid. I would not have come across as confident. I would have come across as needy or weak or insecure. But by being non-reactive to outcome, this doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. This doesn't mean you don't dislike it. And this doesn't mean you don't enjoy validation. It just means that as a man, I can handle what comes up. And you get that sense of feeling inside you then win or lose, whether she rejects you or not, you feel powerful. You keep your power because you were solid. You didn't give your power away to her. Let her walk away with it, or in this case, drive off with it. And then you're sitting there going, wow, I feel weaker as a man. And this is what makes you so powerful, so confident. So what does non-reactiveness look like? Non-reactiveness is simple. When you're out of time, and you really hear this, when you're out of time, with the now, when you're no longer, whether you're using tension or vulnerability, you're reactive to the now. You're not in time with the now, right? So if I look at you, uh, let's, let's use another example. A guy walks into a bar, there's a bunch of beautiful women everywhere, or maybe he's at the office if he's working with all his coworkers. He's a little nervous, he's a little insecure. He drops, let's say, a drink. Let's say at the bar he drops his beer bottle, breaks all over the place. Everybody, all the women look at him. They start laughing at him, right? And what happens there when they start laughing at him? Because he's insecure, because he's a nice guy, because he's nervous. It's back to that same idea. He gets super reactive, rushes really fast. He's now in his head in the future trying to clean up the bottle or he runs away so that he, see, they won't be laughing at him anymore because he wants to run away from the tension that he accidentally created. He's trying to get through the tension as fast as possible or run away from it, either or. So he doesn't have to experience it anymore by cleaning it up really fast or running away from it. Okay, let's take another scenario. Um, he drops the bottle, breaks it, and everybody starts laughing at him and he just shuts off, goes numb, walls off his heart, walls off his body, goes completely up to his head. I'm fine. Yeah, I got this shit. Yeah, whatever. And there's no sense of vulnerability. Matter of fact, he's clear up here. So there's not even hardly a sense of tension skills because he's no longer in the now. It's easy not to handle tension. If you're drunk and you're no longer present at all, you can handle a lot of tension because you're not in the now with everybody else. You're not feeling the vibration of the moment, right? You're just numbed out to it. Now, in this third scenario, the proactive guy, the non-reactive to outcome, he's proactive to the moment because he's non-reactive to outcome. He drops the bottle, people laugh at him, and he owns the sh He stays down in his body, relaxed, opens up, and there's almost a sense of, yeah, I did that. And, and then he takes a bow, he relaxes, he smiles, he waves, he winks at a cute girl and he owns it and then in that process women start to go this guy can handle tension because he stayed with it it's like being on a tightrope man you can go either way but you stay right centered and balanced it's super freaking sexy right and i know what a lot of you guys are thinking wow we men have a lot to do and why don't women have a lot trust me they do that's a whole nother video 
Women have a whole host of things they have to do to fully show up as a woman for you to respect them and really see them as a potential girlfriend. Otherwise, you just see them as, you know, you either don't want them at all or you see them as somebody you want to have sex with and just move on. And they know that. But deep down inside, that's a whole, well, let's just come back to that. That's a whole other topic. So when you master these three skills, when you're great with tension, non-reactive and proactive with tension, that's what develops it, staying low in the body. When you're great with vulnerability, non-reactive and proactive, and that's what develops. And you start to balance those two and marry them together. And you're able to move between them at will. You become not only confident, but uber sexy. You start to become the beginning of a powerful man. Now there's deeper layers to this we can even go into to develop it more and develop it faster. But, uh, but for this video, let's just start with these basics, getting really comfortable with tension. Now, these three skill sets lead to another three skill sets that come out start to come out of you naturally when you master them and i want to talk about these other three skill sets real quick number one is you start to become direct and clear with communication when a man is really good with attention he's not afraid to be vulnerable he's not afraid to ask for what he wants he's not afraid to be really really direct he can look right at a woman low on his body drop into his turn on own his turn on and say there is something about you i like you or he can look at her and say, you know, I haven't decided if I like you yet. You have to earn it. Either way, he's so low in his body, comfortable with the tension, holds the tension, comfortable with the silence, comfortable with being vulnerable, her possibly making fun of him because he didn't, because he said it in some weird, goofy way, that none of that matters anymore. And that's part of what makes him attractive. That's a huge part of what makes him attractive. So he starts to become really direct. Hey, come here. I want to talk to you. No, no, go over there. Matter of fact, the night I went out, and there's another story. I went out with this guy, Jason, Jason Savage. You can look him up online. He's, he's long gone, disappeared many years ago, but he was one of the best with women I'd ever seen. He was a big, big old school PUA, but he specialized not in trading value, but trading pleasure. That was his whole thing. I'm going to create pleasure for the woman instantly. And I'm going to, and I should do a video on this too. And I'm going to invite her into creating pleasure back. And what that did was it got him a lot of sex because that's all he wanted. He wanted a lot of sex. And he was amazing at getting women turned on fast because he'd go right for pleasure. And he was also very direct, very good with tension, very good with vulnerability, insanely good with vulnerability, non-reactive. And I was standing there with him and I'm a newbie at all this stuff and I'm terrified, right? And I'm scared and I'm nervous. And we go out to this bar and he's looking around and immediately sees a woman and he starts, grabs her and pulls her over. Hey, come here, come here, I wanna to talk to you. And he's super direct. I saw the way you were looking at me. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, don't, don't deny it. You were totally checking me out. What's your name? And he just starts talking and he starts going right into this almost sexual turn on kind of energy. Now I'm not saying you need to do this, but this is what he was doing. And then he's like, Brian, 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 see that girl right there? And I said, yeah, I said, go grab her, tell her to come here. Cause he's talking to one girl and he wants this other woman to come over. So I go over there and I'm like, hey, my buddy wanted to ask you a question. He's right over there. And she's like, okay. So she comes over and I'm just watching all this, right? And he's talking to the one woman. He goes, hold on just a minute. He turns to the other one and immediately starts in on her and jokes with her, cracks a joke, gets really direct. And, you know, I saw you walking by. You look really good. Matter of fact, I want you to meet so-and-so. And he introduces her immediately to the other girl. He was a master at getting two or three women almost flirting and fighting for his attention. If they ran off, it was all the better. So he's not wasting his time. He went right to turn on, was super direct, super powerful. And what this did was it allowed the women who were in alignment with who he was to have fun and the women who were not to go away fast so he wasn't wasting his time. So hear that. The women who liked what he was about got pulled in. The women who weren't got pushed away and went away. This allowed him to go right into being real with these women, having fun with these women and not waste the whole night trying to find women and ease his way in because he's a nice guy. He was about sex. He didn't apologize for it, right? Now, I'm not saying that's the way you need to be, but you can be direct. And if you're looking for a wife or a girlfriend, you can be direct in that way. If you're looking to make sales in your business and you're solid in these skill sets, you can be direct that way. To be direct like this, he had to have mastered to some degree, those first three skill sets. The next thing that comes up that's so powerful in this area, and you can see it in the way, in that description I just used, and every description I just used is decisiveness. You see, powerful men make decisions quickly and change their minds slowly, if ever at all. This is a Napoleon Hill concept. When he studied four or 500 of the world's most successful people of his time, mostly men, they made decisions quickly and changed their minds slowly, if ever at all. That creates a lot of tension. 
They take in all the information, make a decision, and they follow through. You're in the tension now. There's no thinking about it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It's like, no, I'm going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step into that tension. I'm going to own it. I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm going to be direct in it. I'm going to move forward through it. And maybe in the beginning, when you first start doing that, you can suck at it. But in time, you start to calibrate. You start to learn. It's like riding a bicycle. You overcorrect, overcorrect, and eventually you find balance. And then it gets easier and easier and easier riding on a surfboard. Now, don't mistake this making decisions quickly as reactively making decisions fast. The idea is you still take in all the information you feel it and then you quickly respond. And I believe if you're really in tune with your body, it's largely a gut decision. It's largely your gut going, okay, I crunched all the data. This is what we're doing. Let's go. And then you follow it through and you learn from it. Win or fail, uh, you know, succeed or not succeed. You take in the information and that takes you to the next decision, right? So the first two, three, four, five times you make a decision, it may not be perfect, it may be uncalibrated, but by getting in there right away and learning, you got four or five quick experiences and now you can start to make adjustments and your gut starts to go, okay, I'm getting this now. Now we're gonna figure out just like riding that bicycle, just like being on that surfboard. So making decisions quickly and changing your mind slowly becomes uber powerful. And the third quality, which I already covered, is sticking to those decisions. And so we got three qualities that naturally start to come out of you as you develop the first three qualities. You get good with tension, you get good with vulnerability, you're non-reactive and proactive, you're an unattached to outcome. You naturally start making decisions, decisive decisions, and then you start sticking to those decisions to follow them through, which makes you better with tension, what makes you better with vulnerability. You just start growing and you do it all from an embodied perspective. That's the proactive way of doing it. So this is really powerful when you think about it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about it, um, in the future, I'm going to be going into each one of these specific topics more and talking about how to develop them. One of the ways that we've developed them in the past is creating a tension journal. Um, just writing down things that scare you, stepping into it just a notch or two above, just like weightlifting what you're comfortable with on a level of tension, say one to 10. One to scale of one to 10, how much tension is this? And we want to just pick little things like, you know, it's a little bit of tension. It's a three, it's a four, it's a five. I'm going to pick those things and I'm going to do them on a daily basis. One, two or three things. And I'm going to make decisions quickly and go do the tension proactively. And then I'm going to learn and grow from it. And then I'm going to write down in the journal what I learned and grew from. In that process, you're going to develop your tension and you're going to develop your vulnerability. Because if you really do this right, you're going to have to get vulnerable. You're going to have to get real with people too. Okay, now that was a quick description. What I'll do is I'll link in this video a description of the tension journal that I've done in the past, a deeper description where you can go deeper into this idea and begin to learn more. So if you want to learn more about these, you want me to create newer versions of these, definitely put in the comments. If you found any value in this, definitely put in the comments. I really want to hear from you. I read the comments the first second, the first week the video comes out a lot. I'm always in there checking it out because I want to hear more about what you want. I also want to get everybody talking because the more we talk, the more we grow together as men, the more powerful, more confident, and more proactive we become. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Definitely check out my previous video on the Tension Journal and definitely check out my ebook, The Art of Fearless Seduction. That'll be linked in here somewhere too. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, only the confident really live.